Hi, welcome to Meet a Google Researcher, a series where we get to meet some folks who are advancing the state of the art and helpful technology, tackling some incredibly difficult problems. I'm Drew Calcagno and I'll be your host. In our last episode, we introduced how language is bridging the gap between people and machines. Now we're going to dive into the physical machine side through robotics, specifically our new SACAN robotics model. You've probably seen videos of robots or worked on one in school, but you haven't seen language models embedded in a robot like this before. This is new, and it's a very early step towards truly helpful and interactive experiences with machines. Google researchers Kanishka Rao partnered with Daniel Ho, researcher at Everyday Robots, a learning robot moonshot at Alphabet. Daniel and the rest of the team at Everyday Robots work alongside teams at Google like Kanishka's. What's so amazing here today is that researchers and their teams have enabled language models to be embedded into something physical that we can see and that we can operate. One of Everyday Robots' helper robots. This is state-of-the-art robotics. Today, we're going to hear from researchers that made these innovations possible. Welcome, Daniel and Kanishka. It's so great to see you. Thanks, Thanks for having us. It's great to be here. So tell us just briefly about yourself, Daniel. Yeah, so I'm a software engineer at Everyday Robots. I work on the simulation team on robotics learning research. Awesome. Thanks. And Kanishka? Yeah, I'm Kanishka. I work on the robotics at Google team, and I work on like specifically robot manipulation. Excellent. So Kanishka, I'd love to kick it off with, tell us about the SACAN robotics model, and generally, what are we seeing in robotics today? Yeah, so the second work is essentially we're trying to get robots to be more helpful. And essentially, if they want to be helpful to us humans, they need to understand our language. And I think this is why the collaboration with the Palm language model folks is really exciting, because they made really breakthroughs in how to under, you know, understand human language, like get me an apple uh, from the MK, for example. It's really important to serve that request to understand it first. And with the language models, we can do this really cool thing where it can not only understand the request, but even plan a little bit about how to go about this. So uh, if you say, grab me an apple from the, the MK, it will try to reason about what would be the intermediate steps to accomplish that. Mm. And that's almost like an autocomplete. And you can imagine things like, hey, maybe I should go to the micro kitchen first as the first step. Or there might be other things like plant an apple tree. Uh, the, the cool part about the second work is that it, it combines the breakthroughs from language modeling to robotics. Mm. So the robotics model, the second model, can go through its own capabilities and try to match them with the language model's proposed action plan, and then see cross-reference them to see which one makes sense. So it's not able to plant an apple tree uh, right now, <laughs> but it can go to the micro kitchen. So it will then pick between these two lists what is the most optimal thing to do first, and then it will you know decide, OK, let's go to the micro kitchen first, and then Next step, look for the apple, and then you know uh, pick up the apple and then bring it to you. So I think for years in the robotics community, we've been training robots to do things uh, in kind of lab settings where it like you know does these kind of picking like tasks. But really, with this second work, we've fused those breakthroughs with language, and all of a sudden, as you said, they can be more helpful, more useful to us. So I think that is really exciting. So Daniel, tell me a little bit more about Everyday Robots and what your team is. Everyday Robots is a learning robot moonshot at Alphabet. We're born from X, formerly Google X, and we work alongside researchers at Google. Everyday Robots is about building a new kind of learning robot, one that could help everyone with almost anything. And my team specifically is an intersection of simulation and learning. It's called sim to real and it is about understanding how to really scale machine learning and the understanding of robots that we need such that we can solve these subtasks that Seiken can do, things like picking up Coke cans or wiping a table. And towards that, you could do something like have a robot try this task over and over again in the real world until it, it, it can try to learn to do that. That may take thousands or hundreds of thousands of attempts. Oh, man, I can imagine. Yeah, so if you want to solve many, many tasks, right? It's not just about solving the one task, but you want to solve any task. Getting that kind of scale will require some kind of acceleration, some kind of computation, or or better kind of learning. And Simtrial is about getting there. The examples that I've seen with this robot, it doesn't seem tremendously 
complex in comparison to some of the movements I've seen on other robotic videos. Are we ahead? It seems like it, but are we behind? What's the deal? You can pre-program these robots to do some really sophisticated things, like robots you know, build cars, for example. Or you might have seen YouTube videos of these robots doing some really sophisticated dances. So when we talk about uh, go pick up an apple, it's not some pre-programmed motion that it just has to execute. It kind of, through lots and lots of examples, has understood the concept of picking up something or going somewhere. And then the key point here is that it can then apply these to unseen or new situations. We don't we don't want like a single lab setting. We want these robots to be kind of in more human centric spaces where they can you know generalize to those new unseen environments. Daniel, what are these robots capable of? So we currently have a fleet of more than 100 robot prototypes. Wow. They're operating around alphabet offices. And they could do tasks such as, for example, sorting trash. And this task can help us divert trash from landfills. And that same robot that can sort trash, you can replace its gripper with a squeegee. And using that squeegee, it can wipe tables around Google Micro Kitchens and cafes. And that same robot, for example, that could open a door, can also have a gripper that can pick up a Coke can or pick up an apple. When we think about all these different capabilities, what are some of the societal implications that you think of Kanishka, and how are you building safeguards throughout it? So yeah, so these things are built in with these guardrails. So we have like a software uh, layer that sits between the intelligence, the, the machine learning model, mm -hmm. and the physical control of the robot. So things like how fast can it move, what kind of forces it applies, we control all that, and we have like hard caps on those. Uh, there's also things within the hardware that's built, you know, uh, from the Everyday Robot Project, where there's like physical limits, and there's always like you know that emergency big red button to stop uh, the robot anytime. So there's actually a button. There's actually a button. <laughs> I'd like to kind of turn back time a bit to your childhood, Daniel. What got you into this field, and is there anything that you remember that um, really helped you in this type of project? So I didn't start coding until senior year of high school, and I didn't start um, doing AI until halfway through college. So for me, I also jumped straight into everyday robots from undergrad. Oh, I thought you really, like everybody had a PhD. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think that's a common misconception, I think, when it comes to research. Really, it is a field about bringing together diverse experiences and perspectives. And I think from my kind of just jumping into the project with a really scrappy, get things done mindset, I think that really does mesh well with the kind of also classically trained, say, PhD research that um, many people have as well. And I think as we kind of build these models at scale, it really is about combining infrastructure with research and with algorithms. So that kind of is a really strong harmony between engineering work and research work that has to get everything done. And yeah, I think th specifically in terms of from my childhood, things that I remember that kind of inspired this project and I think um, inspired me was around chess. I oh. actually played chess quite actively in elementary school and... Were you a grandmaster? <laughs> nowhere close. <laughs> <laughs> but I was, um, yeah, actually playing in tournaments and things like that. Oh, just some tournaments. Fine. Just some tournaments. <laughs> and I think when it comes to Seikan, you can imagine that you're combining together higher level reasoning. For example, strategies or longer sequences of moves in a chess game. Mm. And with the robot, it is actually about picking up those pieces and just how do you make a piece move from one place to another? That's the subtask. And when you combine the two of those, I think you can play a full chess game. And interestingly, we have AI that can play chess games. And now maybe we also have AI that can pick up those pieces as well. Wow, that's a cool connection. Did you have something from your childhood that kind of got you into this field? Well, I actually grew up watching a lot of cartoons, and I was influenced by them. Uh, I love that. I remember uh, I was particularly into this one called Dexter's Laboratory. I don't know if you guys <laughs> yeah. remember. Uh, and there was this kid scientist who had like, this like impressive lab, and he had all these like experiments. And I was like, I really want that. <laughs> <laughs> so like, yeah, I I wanted to go into science. I ended up getting my PhD in particle physics, and uh, then I heard like you know Google. Uh, research actually hires physics PhDs, which mm -hmm. I was surprised to learn. And I kind of that brought me to Google. And ever since joining uh, Google, I've been really uh, driven by how can this tech be useful? Uh, mm -hmm. I think really, I, I think it's really fascinating how our lives can improve with technology. And uh, there was another cartoon that I remember growing up was uh, 
uh, the Jetsons, and I remember there was this like helper robot that was I thought it was really cool how like you know uh, it was helped around the house, and that vision of the future like really kind of uh, stuck with me, and uh, you can imagine like you know things like bring me an apple from the kitchen to you know like young healthy able people uh, I'll call myself young here. Uh, <laughs> It might seem trivial, uh, you know, but if for the large uh, part of the population that may not be so, uh, this kind of assistive, you know, robot technology could really be transformative. So I, yeah, I'm really kind of driven by being part of the research that kind of enables that. I think that's a really exciting future. Yeah, that's really, really inspiring to be able to see so many different uh, populations being able to have potential use cases with this type of work. Did you ever feel like it wasn't going to work. I mean, how did you overcome any fears or doubts in this project? Uh, I, <laughs> I think I still have that fear. I don't think I've overcome it yet. <laughs> so I think, but that's kind of the, the, the fun of it, right? You're you're researching the unknown, and that's that's the really fun bit. I think uh, I remember from the early days of the projects, we had these robots in in our labs, and they were extremely clumsy. And you know, as you spend hours like coding and working with them, and they still are like barely get the concept of like you know, reaching for an object. So we saw over time, as we collected more data, they started to become a bit more capable. Like they would like reach for stuff more often. And then occasionally you would see like them picking it up. And there was like a huge celebration of the team that, hey, it actually picked it up. <laughs> so I think, yeah, it was really cool to see. And that. it didn't drop it immediately. Yeah, it did that a lot at first. <laughs> but then eventually, like, you know, it held on to it. And yeah, that was like a big success. So I think the the connection of that, like with data, is thinking it more and more capable. I think that was when we kind of realized that this was the correct path. And it's interesting, it's interesting to note that with uh, you know the uh, collaboration with the Palm folks on their edge of like machine learning, they've kind of seen there are maybe a couple of steps ahead, and they've mm -hmm. seen this stuff where you know they they were talking about how uh, the models can generalize to things that it hasn't been explicitly trained to do. Right. Like explaining a joke was, was not part of the, the deal initially, but it can do that. So I think that's kind of clues from these other machine learning uh, fields tell us that this is the way to kind of get a general purpose robot is by giving it a lot of data, a lot of ex uh, you know uh, examples. We're on the, on the right track, but we, it feels like very early days still. Daniel, where is the field of robotics going and what's the future going to look like? I think everyone at Everyday Robots and Google Research has a very positive outlook on, on robotics. We think that it could really have a positive, enduring impact on our lives in a helpful way. Um, of course, we're also aware of the unintended consequences that advancements in tech could have. And so we are partnering very closely with advisors, experts, and people to understand what the potential impact could be like. And so will folks be seeing robots at scale in their lives coming soon? I am an optimist, so I think this day will come sooner rather than later. I think there are a couple core technologies that we still need to really break through to, to get there. Kanishka, Daniel, I'm so thrilled that we got to speak today. Thank you so much. Thanks for having us. This was a lot of fun. I had a blast. It was so great to be here. Yeah, thanks.